right, Ella Cinema back, another dish. How we doing out there? Good, great, gray and a yand. Wonderful. As you see on your screen, your dollar, however you are choosing to join me today, I appreciate you. I know the people involved in this one also appreciate you. Got to get the name out there. Got to get the name. I told you. I'm not going to do the big ones. I'm going to do some that I think you should be watching. Marvel's got their own people. I don't need to do a podcast on a Marvel movie. I don't need to do a podcast on, uh, oh God, what a Mission Impossible. You know, Tom Cruise has his people. Anyway, as you see on your screen, your dial, call if you need me. Call if you need me. Admittedly, I have been sitting on this one for quite some time. In fact, uh, Sonny Pang, who stars in this, had uh, uh, recommended this one to me quite a while back. But if if you know, uh, before the show went on almost an indefinite hiatus, I haven't taken a full year off. I wish I did, but I haven't taken a full year off. But... I between a full time job and full time school and and trying to do this, it just it wasn't sustainable. I was killing myself. <laughs> I literally was trying to do all that and you know also be a friend, uh, a son, you know. <laughs> so sometimes just stuff happens. And and also I was I was waiting to see if I was going to get Sonny Pang and James Lee, the uh, writer, director, editor, producer of this film, Call If You Need Me, and it just kind of never materialized. And, you know, no fault against Sonny or James. They're busy people. They're busy people. And I don't fault them for not, uh, you know, being able to make time for this piece of shit podcast. And I mean that. I know that may sound, you know, that that I'm taking a dig at them. I am not. Sonny does a shit ton. Sonny's got his own action team, his own action stunt team. So, you know, it between the time difference and, and you know, me and in my personal life, it just never materialized. And lately, um, I'm going to try to get back in the groove of doing it for you guys. I don't know. I don't know because movies are in a weird place right now. And I wonder, you know, is is something like this uh, going to stand the test of time. And by this, I mean the podcast. I don't mean the movie. I thought the movie was great. I really did. Call If You Need Me, written, directed, edited by James Lee, uh, starring Sonny Pang, Pete Teo, Chuo Tin Si, I butchered that, Lo Bak Lai, and Mohan Raman. So, uh, so what is Call If You Need Me? Which, by the way, streaming for free on Tubi. In fact, when Sonny had suggested this one to me, uh, it was just on YouTube on James's uh, channel, which actually is kind of fucking baffling to me because I think this movie is great in so ma- in, in 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 so many subtle ways. Like it reminded me of a history of violence. You guys remember that one? It reminded me of Out of the Furnace. It reminded me of Killing Them Softly. And interesting enough. Um, a couple of those were made after this film because I believe this film came out in 2009. Um, but it, it's it's a real version, a real look. I think I don't know. I'm I'm not a, a part of underground crime. I'm not an under underground gangster. But the realness in which this movie comes across cannot be understated and you know I'm sure James if he does end up listening it'd be he'll be like yeah it was it had to be subtle because I was shooting on a shoestring budget I I don't think it looks like that at all I mean I think the cinematography by Jay Ishmael uh, I believe that's his name uh was great I think it's what actually propels uh, the story along uh, uh, along with uh, uh, James's execution with the editing, I, I as long as the movie is done right, I love long takes. I love long spots of dialogue, or I love long spots where no one's saying anything and we're just letting the emotion hang in the air. I'm all about that. As long as you do it right and I'm not bored by it, I'll, you know, I tell people this all the time. You know, obviously we live in a day and age where uh, killers of the flower moon, people didn't go out in droves because it was a three and a half hour movie and nobody can sit for a three and a half hour movie anymore. I hate that. 
I hate that. As long as it's done well, I don't give a fuck if it's 19 hours long. I will sit there and enjoy myself because the story is told well and no exception uh, with Call If You Need Me. Uh, I thought every performance was eerily good, eerily good, and so undersold, which I I love for it being like a mid-level underground crime syndicate picture. I love that because not every gangster film is going to have some gold tooth, loud mouth, you know, whatever guns blazing in the air. And I, I like this side of things. So what is Call If You Need Me? Gentle, easygoing, or kia, or kia? Oh, Sonny's going to murder me when he hears my pronunci- pronunciation on some of these things. But here, you know what? I try. God damn it. I give it a whirl. Uh, Orkia moves from the countryside to Kuala, Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> Jesus, Sean. Holy fuck. To Kuala, Kuala Lumpur to work for his cousin and best friend Asun, a mid-level gangster and enforcer. While Orkia works hard to put his sister through or put a sister through school, Asun cares for an unstable girlfriend prone to mysterious disappearances. Yeah, that's that's one way to put it, James, is uh, prone to mysterious disappearances. That's one way to put it. As they both sink deeper into a nocturnal world of debts, drugs, and betrayal, Orkia loyalties are strained when Asun falls out of favor with the bosses and tries to escape the business. I mean, it really, <clears throat> it sounds like something tried and true, doesn't it, gang? Tried and true. But have you seen it uh, by James Lee starring Sonny Pang and uh, Pete, uh, Peter Teo? I don't think you have. So maybe you should check it out. It's on Tubi for free on Tubi for free, and Sling TV for free. Uh, And you can kind of just let that emotion hang in the air. Uh, I I wish we would have gotten James and Sonny on because I would love to pick their brain about um, the decision to make the... uh, the emotions hang in the air uh, like they did and let things marinate. We don't do that, not as a culture. And I would argue 85 to 90% of films, they move very fast. And I understand that we live in a culture where we have to do that because as aforementioned, you know, watching a three and a half hour, you know, movie and a slow burn, you know, people of all ages i don't i don't shit on the younger crowd anymore of all ages younger older they they fall asleep i i see it all the time i have people over for movie nights and the second there is a slow uh slow part in the movie you know dealing with just exposition which we need you start to see the eyes get a little heavy which I don't understand it's like okay I understand that there's not bright colors and flashing lights every five seconds but if that's what you need to keep you entertained you you're probably one not a big film fan and two you probably watch a lot of stuff on your phone which is fine I just I'll never subscribe to to that type of thinking I I, I want to sit in, uh, kind of give you a, just how much I, I, I like to sit and, um, I- you know, ingest and contemplate and prophesize on whatever I may be watching, call if you need me included. Um, I like the mental game I play with myself uh, during the film or after the film, um, you know, wondering what was going through these characters' minds. Uh, the characters are so are done so well, and the acting is so well in this. I like contemplating what Orkia's next move is going to be. I I, I love that sort of thing. And uh, back to what I was saying, uh, my chick and I. I was just telling her yesterday. I have a love hate relationship with uh, TV because 
I, I feel the way that TV is done these days. It's just bop, 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 bop. Like, uh, what were we watching? True Detective yesterday, which is the, the new season, True Detective Season 4, uh, Night Country by uh, Issa Lopez. It, I mean, it, it works really well. But the, the tendency to let the tension hang in the air... Whereas, you know, season one and see, well, I like season two. Everybody shit on True Detective season two, but let me give you an analogy. I thought True Detective season one was so good. It was very similar to Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. What do I mean by that? Well, at the end of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, they ride off into the sunset. Indy and his dad into the sunset, the Joneses into the sunset. And then you see the backlash when they do Kingdom of Crystal Skull or whatever the fourth installment was. Oh, my God, they've really dropped the ball on this Shia LaBeouf swinging through the trees with monkeys, blah, blah, blah. It was never going to be as good as The Last Crusade. So that's an unfair (laughs) judgment on your part, and I'm speaking the royal you right now, on your part, to hold it to such standards. And the same thing is happening with True Detective Season 4. Like, I see a lot of hate on the internet right now, which, by the way, just a little side note, even though this is like a double detour, when are you guys going to be happy with what you actually get? Just because the internet exists doesn't mean you have to go on it and shit on people and shit on products that took a lot of time for people to make. So I digress. I have a love-hate relationship with TV because of just the way that it's executed nowadays. I feel like it's always on to the next thing. And seeing something like Call If You Need Me, which was done, shit, 15 years ago at this point, I love letting stuff hang, letting you, uh, you know, make your own interpretation about it. It's not something that we do very often now because, you know, not to sound redundant, flashing lights, quick, quick edits, quick cuts. I love old school filmmaking where you just let the camera roll and let, you know, you want to talk about commitment to the craft. All these actors in this film, it's, I, I can't remember, or I shouldn't say can't remember. It is a very rare thing to have everybody have the entire cast committed when and and being able to execute an emotion or whatever the case may be uh without any dialogue like sometimes i i'll be watching stuff and there isn't dialogue and whatever movie i may be referring to um you can tell that like there's something off maybe about the person in the c or d you know third fourth role almost looks uh impatient And that's not the case in Call If You Need Me. Um, And like I said, I attribute that to, like, and this is, again, why I wanted James and Sonny on. I would have to assume James, that was very calculated to let stuff hang in the air, to to let the viewer pick sides or however you want to, you know, whatever you want to say. And I just... It's another one of these things where I wish films like this would get more love because we kind of have drifted away from this style of filmmaking. And, you know, thankfully with things like Killers of the Flower Moon, well, I I guess I shouldn't use that example even though I used it for a runtime, but like where there's just this slow, very slow burn. Everybody is patient in this film and more importantly if you're gonna do a you know crime underground crime syndicate movie I uh, maybe syndicate feels too big for what this film is but um it's just I don't know slipping into a nocturnal world of debts drug and drugs and betrayal um I want it to to sting because, you know, we're being so patient with our direction, being so patient with our editing, being so patient with our acting. And I know that I'm, I'm well aware, gang, that only about half of you are going to sit down and watch this start to finish and be like, oh, I see what he means. That's pretty good. And the other half is going to be like, this movie was boring, blah, 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 blah. And what I have to say to you, you're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. Let's, you know, just maybe food for thought, gang. How about 
if you just appreciate the art while you have it. You know, I I was talking to uh, the people's rapper, John Connor, and it's like we're always on to the next thing. The the lack of satisfaction with anything these days is kind of wild to me. Like, and I was saying it or when I when I first started this podcast a long time ago. It would almost was like, well, one, I wanted people to get off their phones and go to the theater and enjoy that. But now I've, I've since kind of pulled back on um, that thought just because at the end of the day, if I'm going to talk about art and it, then it has to encompass everything. So if you like short form media that, that, you know, YouTube shorts or Instagram reels and it and it makes you it invokes some sort of emotion, then I'm all right with it. The problem with that is I I don't like how if you watch a short and let's let's uh, let's use stand up comedy for an example, you see a bit of someone's stand up comedy, you laugh, but the culture doesn't seek out the full product. That's what baffles me. You'll see a glimpse of somebody's stand-up set, you know, one joke from their stand-up set, you laugh, and then you move on to the next short. You move on to the next reel, and it, to me, that's foreign. So, if, like, for example, <clears throat> if something like that pops up, you know, I'm, I'm going to the bathroom or whatever, and I pull up a YouTube short or whatever, and I see, you know, like, again, let's use comedy, somebody doing a stand-up bit, and then it ends – if I laugh, I'm going to seek out, you know, the full special, the full comedy special. Or, you know, like I get a lot of, uh, I know my chick, she gets stuff that pops up that are from movies. And, you know, she'll like the inspirational quote that whoever says blah, 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 but then won't seek out the full product. I don't understand. That's so weird to me. Like, why wouldn't you? And I know everybody will say, well, I just don't have any time. You do. The phone has convinced you that you've spent more time doing things that you have, okay? That's that's not normal. Your brain was not meant to experience 5,000 different emotions in a span of 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> so you can keep telling yourself that, you know, it, it, it's not worth your time to seek out these things, and I'll tell you you're a fool. You know, we need to get back to just basking in whatever art, whatever perspective is being given to us. And, you know, not for nothing. Like, I am I am a firm supporter in independent artists everywhere. Like, I, if, if this is on Tubi for free, I think that's a shame. Why do I think that's a shame? Because you should have to pay for art. You should have to pay for for perspective. And I and I know, well, Sean, we do Netflix and Max and Hulu, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but those are the heavy hitters. Okay? What about the little guy? You know, like myself, this podcast. You know, if if I had the <laughs> we'll talk about me being a hypocritical piece of shit. If I had the patience to constantly be posting online and interacting with my fan base, blah, 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 I would do it. But then it kind of goes against everything that I said you know like the internet is a blessing and a curse you know like I, I'm caught between the devil and the deep blue sea in terms of well I want to get this product out here and I want to you know people to be aware of stuff like this but after I get done doing the show I don't constantly want to be you you should see this you should see this you should see you know like I just hope a lot of people take my opinion and my passion at face value and go for themselves. But back to the Tubi thing, like I, I almost, if you're an independent artist, um, you know, I think it's a crime that you know, they're not getting paid. James and Sonny aren't getting paid off of the ads that play on Tubi when you uh, watch this film. They're not getting any money. And even if they were, I would say it would probably be similar to something like Spotify where you get a third of a penny for the stream that you get. I mean, do you have any idea how how many streams, you know, that would take for anyone to even get a dollar? Think about that. That's not okay. And I and I and I, eventually I think we will start to drift away from that, but as of right now, we're in the thick of it. So, I sorry for that 
but 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 it, it makes me upset because a movie like this should get more love you know it's it I believe like a couple of festivals and awards that it got silver award Asian dig, uh, Asian digital competition, 33rd Hong Kong international film festival. What it was in the Hong Kong international film festival and you lumps get to see it for free on Tubi. I'm not okay with that. <laughs> you know, I, if, if it was possible, you know, I would, I would give James Hey, man, here's 20 bucks for the film. You know, I don't mind paying for independent artists. I contribute to Kickstarter and and like, you know, the the rapper that I had on uh, the other day. The money went directly to him. That makes me feel good. And then what I'm doing in my off time is like, you know, if we're talking music or podcasts or something like that, lesser known stuff, I'll just push play in my pocket and let it run while I go to work or while I go to school or whatever, you know, because I, I think that means something, you know, I don't think it's doctoring the numbers. You may think so, but I'm getting, you know, the, it may not be much money, but I'm trying to get some money in their pocket. So when I found out that this was on Tubi or YouTube, like, I, I don't know if you can do this. This is how stupid with social media I am. You should have to pay five bucks to James if you want to watch this on Tubi. You should have to pay five bucks to James and Sonny if you want to watch this on YouTube. I know, that's fucking stupid thinking, and I should just be happy that the film exists and you can get it, because for a while there, and you know, maybe someone from the cast and crew uh, can correct me if I'm wrong, for a while there, you couldn't see this. So, <laughs> it just, like, I, I think everything, and worse... Worse, if we're going to go, I don't want this to disappear into the ether, you know, with with physical media on the dec decline, you know, I hope it comes back like records or vinyls, but I don't know, people, people like music more than they like movies, you know, it's a much smaller time commitment, it's, <laughs> but, but my fear is something like this just disappears, and that's, well, that's, a, you know, another reason why... I'm very leery about putting a bunch of time into this podcast because what's going to happen when half the shit that I recommend you can't find anywhere? The only way that you can find it is if you come over to my place and watch it. That's just, that's not okay. Art should exist everywhere and it should be forever. That's what art is. You leave it all on the table and, you know, obviously once the art leaves the artist's hands, it's now um, in the hands of the audience, the consumer, but I don't know, I really just want to continue supporting uh, independent artists, and in some ways it's very hard to do that, and in some ways it's easy, it just depends on what it is, so hopefully we kind of turn the corner on that, and I understand that I haven't talked um, a, a ton of uh, about call if you need me because yeah, well if you're if you're just tuning in you're a new listener um all of these are spoiler free okay i've already gave you the synopsis you know i i i've given you the acting in this cannot be understated in fact uh at least in sunny's case this may be one of the most patient and well executed roles he's been in and I truly mean that. Like, and this is a guy that was in, you know, Timo Tayanto's uh, "The Night Comes for Us," uh, "Kill Fist," "Headshot." You know, like the list goes on and on. And when I think about um, Orkiai's, uh character as a whole, you got to be a goddamn good actor to to let this dialogue hang in the air, to let the emotions hang in the air. You know, I mentioned Sonny, but everybody's performance in this is fantastic. Like, it's not, it, even in 2009, I would argue it's not easy to do that. In a world of smash cuts and, you know, snappy dialogue, blah, blah, blah. And I understand that's the way the culture uh, trended uh, since 2009, but it doesn't mean that you gotta, like, only seek that out. Oh, well, I'll fall asleep if I don't. You won't. You won't put your mind in the minds of the character. I tell this to my chick all the time. Just because a dude, you know, uh, a, a white male is the lead in whatever the hell that we're watching, 
Switch the perspective in your head. Why don't you picture yourself like if you were in the movie, but in this context, you're, you're pretending that the main character is a female, and then you can get into it more. I do it all the time. There's a, what movie did I tell her by example? Oh, The Villainess. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that one, check that out. It's fantastic. The, the, the lead is a female throughout the entire thing. And you want to know what I did? Oh, man, it'd be pretty sweet if, you know, I could beat ass like that and blah, blah, blah. I wasn't like, that's a girl. I can't get into it, which is literally our culture now, whether you guys want to admit it or not. That is what our culture is. So I, I don't know. Get out there. Show some love for this. You know, give Sonny his flowers. Give James his flowers. Give Peter his flowers. I, I just... I get so bummed and defensive because I don't want stuff like this to go away. And upon rewatching it, I I realized at least in, if I still lived in Los Angeles, I could recommend it to quite a few people and they would take my, uh, my recommendation and go and watch it and, uh, you know, send me a critique after the fact. Unfortunately, where I live now, Toledo, Ohio, not a film culture here. I can't, there are very few people I can recommend this to without, ugh, this movie's too slow. I like it, but it's slow. That's stupid. Did you, I like it, but it's slow. Do you know how many times I've heard that in the past five years? Well, I, I think I liked it, but it just moved too slow. Shut up. That's the genius of it. That's the genius of it. Not everything in the gangster world just moves, you know, it's, it's fast. Uh, I'm, I'm doing an audio medium and I'm, you know, snapping my fingers, getting all animated for a camera that doesn't exist. But that's literally what I mean, folks. So please go just stream this, watch it on Tubi, watch it on Sling TV. And then if you want to be like me, go up, hit the like button on it. No, I'm never going to say like and subscribe to my podcast. That shit is beneath me. Never have, never will. But what I mean is like, you know, when you get done with a Netflix movie, did you like this movie? Give it the thumbs up, okay? And then if it was as slow and nauseating slow as you say it is, put it on before you go to bed so they get a stream out of it. You said you're going to fall asleep anyway, right? So give them the stream for independent artists. We need to do that more. Sorry, I don't know what just happened. I kind of blacked out for 15 minutes. But this, like I said, this reminds me, uh, call if you need me, reminds me of a history of violence. And if any of you guys have seen that, very slow but violent. And, like, it just works. Not a not a fuck ton of... Uh, uh, a, a soundtrack to it, you know, not a not a score that is hitting the notes during the, you know, action sequences or the peak moments of uh, actors actors and actresses' performances. I like it sometimes when there's no score to speak of. Love it, you know, because then that means you have to be fully invested in the product. And I think that was no exception for me uh, in terms of Call If You Need Me. I was completely invested. I love the slow burn. I love the awkwardness sometimes because, let's be real, being a gangster can be a little awkward, huh, gang? A little awkward. So please go to Tubi and stream this. Call If You Need Me, uh, written, directed, edited by James Lee, starring... Oh, I guess we're going to have to butcher all these names again. Sonny Pang, Pete Tiao, Chu Chin Si, Lo Bak Lai, and Mohan Raman. You're not supposed to roll your R's on that one, man. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be coming back a little more often. I'm going to try to do some more independence, uh, independent films for you. Um, just because that's what I want to do. I, if I'm going to continue this show, I want it to be stuff that is off the beaten path and it is still enjoyable just because Leo's not in it doesn't mean that it's not good. And I, you know, obviously that's, that's a little overkill of a statement, but get out there to be call. If you need me, I, I thought it was fantastic. I really did. We need more movies like this, more movies that are real, more movies that hurt because they're so real. Ellis Cinema. I'll be back when I feel like it.
call if you need me. Streaming on Tubi and Sling, Bla- uh, Sling TV now. Why did I say Sling Blade? Like where you talk to?